I have been playing around with this tool for a couple of weeks. I think it is a great tool for both teachers and for students. I'm excited to share it today. It actually came from a middle school teacher in our district who has been using it with her students. Um, so the tool is the How Science Works tool from HHMI. It's available in English and in Spanish. So if you click on this button, it will open up in Spanish. And this is a great tool for understanding um, the nature of science. And so generally, we as a science education community have done a really great job of focusing on, you know, the scientific method and control experiments. Um, as a community, we've not always been so great about pulling in all the other piece, pieces of the scientific method and other practices. Our new standards, our seed standards, ask us to do that. We have all these other practices written into them. And this is a tool that can really, I think, help us as teachers. Um, both when we're planning and trying to understand things ourselves and also our students um, to help engage in all of those practices. So um, I'm just going to open the basic one right now. There is a more detailed one that might be useful depending on who you're using. If you're, if you're just using it or using it with students and who your students are and, and what age they are. Um, but you can see when you open up this tool, there is this map over here that has a lot of um, things that go into scientific discovery. The detailed version has more and it also shows relationships among them. So um, the first, so I have four, as I've been playing around with it, there are four applications that I could think of that would be useful. I'm sure there are a lot more. The first one was just teacher background knowledge. So when I opened up, especially the detailed one, there were some things on there that I had not thought about for a very long time. Um, so for example, the idea that really pure chance is one entry point into scientific discovery. And that's not something we share with our students a lot. Um, and so kind of looking at this and getting a, a reminder of all of these pieces and how they fit together was just good. I think it's just good teacher background knowledge. So that is the first um, application. The second one is for unit planning. And so I've been playing around with um, how this could be a great tool for planning out a unit that would um, ensure that students are really engaged in doing science over the course of a unit. And so, for example, um, if I was planning out a unit, I want to start with one of these entry points, right? So maybe my entry point into this unit is actually curiosity. So I'm going to show a video or do a demo or, or maybe there's a reading. There's something that we're going to do in class that's really going to get kids curious about whatever it is that I want them curious about. Um, so that's going to actually be my entry point. And then we're going to spend the first day maybe um, making observations and asking some questions and sharing our initial ideas. So maybe we're not just sharing data yet, but students have some ideas about what's going on and they're interested because this thing has got them curious. And so that's what we're going to do for our first day. So now that we've kind of set the stage, kids want to figure this thing out, um, maybe the next thing is I have some data and I also have an investigation that will help them collect um, information that they can use to go back and answer this question eventually. So maybe that's my next move. We're going to be gathering some data both from outside sources and they'll generate data themselves during an investigation. They'll interpret it and maybe they'll, they'll use that to kind of come up with an explanation. After they do that, I want them discussing their ideas with peers and listening to peers. Um, and then maybe after we do that, they're going to go back and they're going to revise that explanation. And so you can see, I'm not, you know, I don't need to go through a whole unit. You can see how um, you could use this to sequence a unit to ensure that your students are really engaging in science. And so maybe instead of you know, several different kind of disconnected activities that they might be fun and they might be great, like standalone activities where students learn a core idea or some, you know, some scientific concept. Um, this kind of helps me sequence things so that over the course of the whole unit, students are really engaged in all of these different um, things that scientists do. So you, I'm sure you notice as I clicked on those things, the, um, it put in arrows so I can see my pathway through this map. And it also added things over 
um, in this column. You can reorder things over here. So maybe I actually want them coming up with their ideas before they ask questions. And so you can see as I reorder things, it just reorders that on the map for me. And then I can also open these and put in notes. I can attach documents. I can put in pictures. So this is where I could actually put in some notes and maybe attach, you know, maybe down here I'm, um, putting in the URL for the data source and also attaching the investigation that students are going to do. So you can save these and come back to them. So this might be a place where you can save um, or you can use it to design and save some unit plans. So that's kind of the second thing I thought this might be useful for. The third application is a student facing application. So this could be a place where students are actually recording their learning. So they're building a portfolio over the course of a unit that they can go back and look at all the pieces. It maybe will help them connect the different activities you're doing. So I could imagine at the end of every you know, class period or two class periods, having students pull up their own um, version of this and adding to it, right? So today we gather data and they can kind of describe like what they did. Maybe they even just attach their lab that they did. Um, you know, today we, uh, we had a discussion. Here are the things that I added to the discussion. Here are the things that I heard from my classmates. And um, here are the things that I decided to revise in my explanation after that discussion. And then maybe I also attach my revised explanation. So by the time we get to the end of the unit, students have access to you know all their learning. They've had a chance to go back and reflect after each piece. Um, they can see how all of these pieces are connected together. So that's kind of the third idea I had. And then the fourth application is also another student one. And this comes from the teacher who shared this with me. One thing that she does with her students is when they are reading about scientific discoveries, they actually use this map to map out how scientists um, figured out what they figured out. So this is a great literacy strategy to help students kind of analyze text um, they could be summarizing it over here, right? So as they're putting in all these pieces and also helps them see what it is scientists do, right? Scientists aren't always in a lab just doing a controlled experiment. They're, uh, they have these different entryways into scientific discovery and then they're doing all these different things. Um, and so that's another uh, great way that I think will help students both with literacy and also um, help them see how science works and how all of these pieces fit together. If you use this and you think of some other applications or you use it in another way, I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear what you're doing with this tool. Um, so this is the HHMI How Science Works tool.